What's up, Milwaukee? It's time for another lovely edition of WMSE's Local Live. My name is Cal. I'm here as usual with Aaron. Good evening. Good, good evening. It's a hot one outside, as it Marty is. said. Yeah. Not as hot as it was in Oak Creek today, but you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got the lake. <laughs> yeah, we do the have the lake. lake. We also have the If I Had a Hi Fi effect. They're rolling in strong. Uh, if you were here in the vicinity of Milwaukee Street and you caught their sound check outside of the building, you know it's going to be a nice, loud one tonight in the best way possible. If I had a hi fi, their first record, uh, We're Never Going Home, was released um, on May 7th. First record since 2012. Let me retrace my steps. <laughs> so it's it's been quite some time. It's been nearly, or actually over seven years since they put anything out. And Coming up this Friday, uh, on the 19th, they're going to have a really big official party, even though they released a record in May, a uh, record release show with Blood and uh, Cindy Kane, Daughters of St. Crispin, and that's all going down at the High Dive. So let's introduce the band. we got DJ on drums, sampler pad, and vocals, uh, uh, aka, actually, let's just say Dr. Awkward, uh, Yell Delay is on guitar. Mr. Alarm is on bass and synth, and Rev Ever is on guitar and synth. Indeed. I gave it away. <laughs> gave it away. Well, not completely. Don't hate me. No. <laughs> I, I, think they'll, uh, I think they'll forgive you. I have to uh, give, if I had a hi-fi, a lot of credit for uh, the fact that I'm even on this show, because back when I discovered them, uh, early mid-2000s, um, whenever exactly that was, um, it really opened my eyes to how great the Milwaukee rock scene was, like the underground rock scene was going on without, you know, I'd heard a few things, but really didn't know the the variety of stuff that was going on. And it really set me off on an obsession. And uh, you think about, uh, it's almost two decades into their existence now, and uh, they're accomplishing something that's pretty rare and continuing to evolve their sound. But still, I think if uh, fans from their, way back in 2001 when they put out their first album you would still recognize them as the same band even though they've changed a lot so pretty cool yeah they really haven't strayed too far from that original sound and i think when i first heard them it was early aughts maybe compliments to the uw milwaukee or uwm post uh, newspaper <laughs> there was a, a review involved um and also they had an awesome 2006 release with Modern Machines, which was one of my favorite bands in the, back in the day. Um, but these guys uh, haven't put anything out since that Not A Surf EP back in 2012, and they put out an awesome, also, soundtrack and project involving Cedar Block, which was Brent Godey's pet project. Um, they did uh, a project called Sexy Results. Cedar Block's Dig for the Higgs and How the Quest Was Won. It was super geeky loud and super memorable so i am excited to see what these guys are gonna kick up next with this brand new record and we're gonna let them rip into it live indeed we've got a quick message to play from our pals at club garibaldi we'll be right back with some live music WMSE's Local Live is supported by Club Garibaldi. Located at 2501 South Superior Street in Bayview. Open seven days a week, Club Garibaldi serves burgers, hot wings, and more. And features live music weekly. For more information and Club Garibaldi's live music events, visit clubgaribaldi.com. All right, and without further ado... We will send it out to the Bob and Jeannie Friedman Live Performance Studio. Here is If I Had a Hi-Fi.
everybody out there. Tuning has to happen. You know, as a... <laughs> Keep going with the tuning song. I like it. This is all off our new record, We're Never Going Home. This is our new hit song, Tuning, Tuning, Tuning. <laughs> Chris Vocal, Chris Vocal, Chris, Chris, Chris Vocal. How'd that one yeah, go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we good? Yeah. And that sounds in tune. This song's called The Wrist. It's about customer service. Next one goes out to the any Vaxxer Alex Jones fan in your life.
one more before the break. Before the, the humidity stops. It's another song about space. The, the song before was kind of about the lack of space. Space, <laughs> space or not space. We're learning today. We're trying to teach and learn. Teach and learn. <laughs> we good? Yep. Yeah. Back to Cal and Aaron. Salutations. This is Mark Mothersbaugh, formerly of Devo, with you on listener-supported radio, WMSE, Milwaukee. All right, folks, we've got If I Had a Hi-Fi in the studio with us now. Welcome, gentlemen. Here we are. Hi. Hello. Hooray. We're here. <laughs> Hi. You do the old uh, introduce yourselves on the mic thing. Sure. Hi, I'm Yale DeLay. I play guitar and sing. I'm Dr. Awkward. I play drums. I sing. I'm Mr. Alarm. I play the basses and sing and keys and things. I'm Reverend Ever and I do guitar and synths and my real name is Michael. I... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. you now. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> K-fabe. I can't lie. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so we had you guys in here in, what, 2015? 15, I believe. 15. Yeah. 15. Yeah. For sure um, the latest Flame. Au revoir. Right? That's right. Oh, yeah. That's what Cal reminded me of because I'm like, it hasn't been since 2012, but no, that seems no. way too long. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what has generally been going on with all you guys since 2012? Because you know, aside from us having you in here, uh, it's been kind of a lengthy time. Have you like, you know, did you consider taking a permanent break, or was there like an official no. hiatus status? <laughs> <laughs> it was never going to be permanent. We uh, yeah. we we got kind of burned out on 
the rate at which we were going at things. So we we gave it about three years from 2012 to 2015 when we got back in here. Um, and uh, yeah, but then it just takes. I mean, it just takes a while to get back in the groove. You know, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like we had a few songs, but we needed to obviously put t put enough together to have a set and then a record and. And then you're like, oh, that's not good enough. We're gonna throw that out. We're gonna like, you know, get refine what we're doing. Yeah. So yeah, standard band stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, pra we all space bought houses moved. too. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Practice space yeah. moved twice. Yeah, yeah our practice space no, moved a bunch times. too. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it did didn't it? Was, it? it was enough times. Yeah, yeah a lot of three. times. Yeah. Do you practice at one of your houses? We practice no, in the yeah. cud. Oh, in the cud of hay. We're in the nice. cud of hay. Yeah. yeah, all those, all those plain-proof houses. It's within a few, yeah. within a few houses of a, a certain venue. Yeah. That okay. shall remain nameless, but is very famous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's that one. That's that one six a.m. bar, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Actually, that sounds perfect for your band. Plain-proof. It, it um, really yeah. Is. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> we don't bug the neighbors. Our one of our neighbors is retired and. He told me, I, I can't hear out of half my ear. Make all the noise you want. I don't care. So, <laughs> That's so we will. And Sounds then he like talked to us about his gun collection. Same. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> good guy. Good guy. Yeah. <laughs> want him around. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, when did you guys start ramping up to do this record? Like practicing, writing, all kinds of stuff. Well, I mean, oh, parts of it were written in 2012. Like, oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I mean, like there, like a matter of fact, I don't know what is there a song we're playing tonight, or is it a 2012? Mm, not. Nah. No, we but oh no, wait, well, no, Death Van. We played Death Van. Yeah, oh, yeah. Death Van's yeah. probably okay. 2012. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, so, when when we got back together, though, part of the fa part of the whole deal of getting back together was uh, being a little more chill about our routines. So. You know, as far as like, I, I don't know if there was a real ramping up until maybe we realized that we had enough music for the record and then got serious about writing the lyrics for it. Yeah. And, then, I mean, and from so. there, it was pretty, pretty quick. We wanted, we knew we wanted to get into Hell Street as quickly as we could after that and just make sure that we weren't uh, dragging our feet too much on the record because we ended up dragging our feet on the post record things. But the actual recording. We did pretty quick. <laughs> Except for we had weird things happen. Like the first day we went in, the air conditioning wasn't working. And it was like the hottest day of last year. And you lost your leather hat. I did lose oh. my leather hat. Like uh -huh. I couldn't get my Stevie Ray right. Yeah, the mojo <laughs> and then uh <laughs> and then and then the next day, didn't the power go out? I think Yeah, briefly, the power and yeah. then there was a there was a drip, like it was like really raining and there was a drip and, and it was like inching close. It kept dripping on Shane. Like hitting him in the back of his head, and then it kept inching closer to the board, oh like God. throughout the recording. Wow! And we're like, I, I like, I started to feel really bad for Shane. Like, yeah. we're gonna. I was like, we'll find a tarp. Like, like we'll deal with this. But an A plus quality uh, studio, yeah. by the way. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> great studio. But you it was know. a total fluke. Yeah, total that, fluke. Total that doesn't happen thing. every day. Hey. She's listening to this at home, like tugging his collar. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> I have bookings. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't happened since. I guarantee it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's great. Pretty clear during the overdub for the sessions. <laughs> um, thinking back to like the early days of the band, um, what's the biggest difference between the way like you approached writing and recording then versus now? It's sparser. Like we don't we don't do as as we think about the the pieces to the puzzle. We're adding a lot more, and we're not adding as many pieces. Mm -hmm. Like and also the process is like really shaved down. Like we'll do overdose at the same time. So like, you know, normally it would just like, like everybody goes in, does a bunch of loud stuff. And then somebody wants to do an overdub. Normally, you know, before it was just one person in that room. This time it's usually two or three of us. And like, we bang it out a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's just a faster, leaner process. Okay. But then mix wise, it's actually a longer process yeah. because we would not have, you know, we wouldn't really have the resources or anything like that to support. But, you know, there wasn't a whole lot going on in terms of nuance in the mix. So it was just like, are all the levels up? Okay, <laughs> yeah. cool. Turn that knob that way once and then go that way. Okay, record's done. Uh, whereas this this time we really took our time with it. and um, Yeah, mixing you know, took a lot longer for sure. to preserve the dynamics of it and kind of, you know, we felt like we had something to work on with that. Also, now there's dynamics. <laughs> that is new. That's always nice. We we added mezzo forte and uh, along with our forte and fortissimo. Wow, <laughs> spoken like true musicians. <laughs> I had to take theory twice. Amazing. 
I like fortissimo is really really loud. I think that fits. I, I, that's how I remembered it. So I'm, thanks for uh, thanks for having my back on that one. No problem. <laughs> He's just <laughs> saying words. <laughs> no, I totally know that exists. <laughs> so I'm wondering about latest flame. It, Cal, I think had mentioned latest flame released it. I didn't like totally fact check. Um, we thought that they were done. They uh, uh, Dan's kept his digital distribution mm-hmm. up and running. So. Okay. Uh, he's been gracious enough to let us, uh, you know, like upload to Red Eye for like the Spotify and iTunes and whatnot. So cool. as a result of that, um, the credits come up as latest flame on like, uh, yeah, like computer I think things. probably Google and other, you know, computer machines. Sure. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we act, the record's self financed. There's no label that put out the physical. It's, just oh, us. Okay. We wouldn't want to put that on anybody else ever. Again. And and it's the first time we've ever had to do that in like 19 years. Wow. That's true. That's true. So. How'd it go? Uh, it's been an adventure. Um, <laughs> I learned a lot about uh, pressing records and getting oh, yeah. sleeves done, jackets, and mm-hmm. uh, all that. Um, CDs were a lot easier just because we've been working with Super Duper for years and go back with them. So it's just, yeah. hey, we have a CD. Can you make it? Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but we also worked with an outside artist, which we don't usually do. So that was a whole... A whole process there, and it was uh, it was a good learning experience, I think. And I, I think we'll be heading into the next one more prepared. Okay, so um, you know that you mentioned the artist uh, is her name Chloe. Yeah, Chloe Ashton, uh, in Portland, Oregon. She drew the Death Van, right? Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> she drew the Death Van with Bigfoot behind the wheel. Yeah. How did you come, you know, across Chloe's artwork, and why did you decide to have her do the? Oh, the we've cover? been uh, Chloe and I have been friends for years, and you know, um, I think I met her initially because I'd seen some of her art. Okay. Um, and it was just fantastic, and so it was just you know there were. There was a big list, but there was a real short list of like four or five people that we knew we could work with, and Chloe was the first one to come back with something that really fit with not just one part of the record, but multiple parts. Mm-hmm. And uh, she yeah. also incorporated Reggie White, so we <laughs> had did. to give it up. We, we, awesome. we, had, we finally had we uh, <laughs> achieved a dream there. Did we even <laughs> ask for that, or was that something she, she just asked knew if how we to? A mural <laughs> on the she asked if we wanted something on the van, and I knew exactly what needed to go there. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay. So that's not based on an actual death van. Yes, it is. We oh, had is. a death van. Yes. Yeah, okay. but we did not have a death van with Reggie White painted on. No, it. That was no, a, no, that no. Was a dream. It was a six hundred dollar van. You don't paint on a six hundred dollar van that you bought the two days before tour. No, you do. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, <laughs> I, mean, I guess yeah, like point. if one of us were an artist, maybe, have but we're not. You got the Muppet movie, man. You like yeah. your fam. I guess. But. <laughs> and there actually is a plank that held up the driver's seat. Oh really? Okay. And, uh, at one point in time, all of the doors stopped working except for the driver's seat. So we had to literally load the whole van worth of equipment <laughs> through cabs, the cabs. bass cabs, heavy guitar amps, 70 pound guitar amps, everything through the whole van into the trunk and then go and, and go then the driver's back side. out, back out. Yeah. All, all of us had to go in through the driver's side, get in the van, drive to where we had to go and then repeat the process. And then after the show, repeat the process again. That's, I respect uh, you guys a lot more. Now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some real adult it's, stuff. It's really not, is. we're not a smart band. No, I highly recommend against all of this. The, by the way, the only time we fixed that van, <laughs> <laughs> that would not stand. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a bridge too far. Yeah. <laughs> even, even us were like, yeah, we should probably get that looked at. Um, I want, this is a question that actually I wanted to ask the last time you guys on were on and I didn't get around to it because I know you have an affinity for like alien and astronomical uh, themes in your music, like going all the way back. Um, I'm wondering if any of you guys have had like close encounters with aliens that you want to share with us no, or any sort of supernatural. Space is fake, man. <laughs> well, we just played the song Space is Fake. I it's thought fake. that was just maybe an official like metaphor rather than... You actually don't believe spaces. Go look up and tell me. That's all I'm gonna yeah. Do. Does it look real to you? Mm. Huh, Cal? Yeah, we want to believe. We don't get many stars in the city. <laughs> right. Doesn't look real to me. You got four stars in front of you right now, buddy. Ooh. 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 They're somewhere in here. I can't see. I, I don't know. I'm looking at the CDs over here. Um, oh, some other, like, 
other things when I was uh, listening to your first album today, just kind of like reminiscing. Um, the weird, the funny thing is, like you, you have a lot of similar uh, topics, not just like alien type of stuff, but like even like social commentary and political type of stuff. That like, do you ever get uh, a little frustrated that how little things have changed over the course of your band? I get frustrated in the fact that they've gotten worse. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we were talking about this uh, on another show uh, last week. Is actually like a lot of our subject matter on the first record was a little more on the nose. Like uh, there was actually a little, there was a little social commentary on the first record, but mostly it'd be like, "Hey, I want to write a song about Tesla and uh, Edison and uh, how they didn't like each other." So I'm gonna write a song about that. Boom, done. And now the song, the weird subject matter we're writing about, we actually like work into metaphor and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the Death Band is actually like a metaphor for this this crazy ride we're on called life, or something. But there's also a real Death Band. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but it actually <laughs> exists. It's multiple Existed. levels. Yeah, I like that. Okay. <laughs> Would you consider uh, your album a? concept album because at first glance it seems like it's a tour concept album i you know i i i wouldn't say that i like i mean like uh i mean the sexy results record that is mm-hmm. like definitely our concept record if yeah. you know um we i i don't think if it is it, it if it is a concept album it's an, something that happened very organically and wasn't like oh we're going to write out a plot line story i mean we're not making lifehouse here you know like um <laughs> you know there's not like you know like a story about the earth and blah 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 no it's just it's basically a commentary on on real life and what's going on right now and okay. and the record is really entrenched in in you know the the daily life be it our customer service careers be it uh politics be it us trying to actually make art when it's you know we're working 40 hours a day and have mortgages to pay mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. 40 hours a day yes yeah, so <laughs> so the concept yeah. album peaked with operation mind crime why would you even try <laughs> done. Uh-huh. the lesson was learned operation mind crime 2 happens we're not yeah. let's not do that yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> ain't no jet city woman around here man that's empire dude Whoa, darn You're it. definitely. <laughs> my wife just gained more respect for you for that <laughs> commentary. All right, well, we should get you guys back out for your second set. Um, first, tell people about the show this weekend, the release show. Oh yeah, we should we should plug that. Uh, July nineteenth, this Friday at High Dive, uh, us and Daughters of Saint Crispin, who are a new band from Madison, uh, with our buddy Russell from Tyranny is Tyranny, and uh, and yeah, uh, Doyle. United, yes, United Sons of Toil, Pound, Wisconsin, back right. in the day. Um, they're playing as well as a touring band called Blood. Uh, the other band dropped off, I found out today. So, oh. So, yeah. You want to play? Show up. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, Come on. What the heck? What the heck? That, that goes out to all you listeners. Uh, step up. Bring one for the team. <laughs> We've been doing it in 19 years. Where have you been? Yeah, I haven't learned an instrument <laughs> yet. I'm going to have to learn, uh, you know kazoo maybe i sure. could do that i could pull that you off. throw it through solo effects and loudness uh, no one cares yeah it's fine no, i think i'm busy anyway <laughs> <laughs> all right let's uh let's hear uh, a couple more songs from you guys out in the studio and uh yeah we'll play a couple messages we'll be right back All right, we're going to send it right back out to the Bob and Jeannie Friedman Live Performance Studio for a couple more songs live by If I Had a Hi-Fi. Give me a second here. Give me a second here. It's very humid in the studio. Lots of strings go out of tune. Much tunes. Things are are, uh, acting strange and feeling strange. You good? Almost. Getting there. Getting there. We good? Yeah. Here's a song called Little Plastic Dinosaurs.
Rivers are real.
just want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in to tonight's edition of Local Live on WMSE. It's a production of WMSC Radio, recorded and broadcast live from the Bob and Jeannie Freeman Live Performance Studio on the downtown campus of MSOE. Local Live is produced by me and by Cal Roach and engineered by Billy Cicerelli, all video by Moleskin Productions. Hospitality for Local Live Art is provided by Cedar Teeth Pizza, who can be found online at cedarteeth.com, Anodyne Coffee, who can be found online at anodynecoffee.com, and by Sprecher Brewing Company, more information at SpreckerBrewery.com. For upcoming guests and archives of past local live performances, visit WMSE.org. And tune in again next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for another edition of Local Live with the elusive Naren Schiff, who I've been really wanting to have on the show ever since I saw them live many years ago. And I don't even know if they have a, a website, so it should be interesting. Anyway, it's going to be cool. And uh, in the meantime, stick around for Midnight Radio. We'll see you next week.